Welcome to the Invested Dads Podcast, simplifying financial topics so that you can take action and make your financial situation better, helping you to understand the current world of financial planning and investments. Here are your hosts, Josh Robb and Austin Wilson. 79 down. This is a weird credit score. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Invested Dads podcast, a podcast where we take you on a journey to better your financial future today. Josh, we are going to be talking about your credit score. Oh, good. I've been wanting to know what my number is. I'm <laughs> glad we're going to bring up my credit score. Okay. Well, not necessarily your credit score, Josh, but credit scores in general. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be the most exciting episode ever. You know, when... I can't go to sleep at night. I count credit scores, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's useful. So I guess let's take let's take a thirty thousand feet approach. Yes. At first, so what is credit? We've kind of hit on this a couple times, hit in between a couple episodes yeah. over the course of this year. But what is credit, Josh? Yeah. So you know, think of credit card. You know, it's like I'm going to give you credit for doing something. Yes. yes. Credit being, it's lending or borrowing it's it's the ability or your obligation that you can cover something so a credit card you are borrowing on credit so someone is in a sense on your behalf buying something for you they're giving you credit with the promise yeah. of paying it back yep and so a credit report is looking at your ability or for the people that maybe are the ones going to be the ones lending to you your ability to sustain that debt load that yep. they're going to offer you yeah so and credit is not free Generally yep. speaking, so there is a charge associated with that, and that is in the form of interest. Yes. So when you borrow because you're not paying for something out of your own pocket and you're using credit to do so, there is a risk associated with that that the lender is taking on that risk, so they are going to be compensated in the form of interest. Yes, and the more risk there is, the more interest you'll probably have to pay. Correct. So let's then let's dig down a little deeper now, yep. 30,000 feet down to... 10,000 feet. So what is a credit score? Well, in short, it's a number. Yes. We like numbers. It's a score. It's a score. I like scores. Yeah. So it's a number between 300 and 850 that shows a borrower's credit worthiness. Yes. So, like many things in life, higher is better. Not golf. This is not golf. This yeah. is the opposite of golf. Higher is better here. And the most common is really a score that was created by the Fair Isaac Corporation, also known as FICO. FICO. You gotta love like, more like a dog name, right? Now. Like, come, come here, here come here, Fico. There, there, oh, ha, there is name a dog. There is totally I a dog like in America it. named Fico. Fico. Totally is. It's a nerdy like bank oh, guy's oh, dog, definitely. but definitely is. And there are three major credit reporting, you know, agencies. Those are Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. So these all record, they calculate, they retain these scores for individuals, and the scores may differ slightly between the three. But they'll be in the ballpark yeah. generally. They'll do a little bit different calculation on how they attribute or give you know weighting to different things. But yeah, you're right. If you score, let's say a 700 on one, you may be maybe a 690 or 680 or a 710. You know, you'll yeah. be in the range. You'll be close. So you mentioned my favorite word, calculate. Calculate. So calculate how are credit scores calculated, and we'll link a great article from Investopedia in the show notes. But there are five components to credit score calculation. Number one, payment history okay. is the biggest component of credit score calculation. And that's really on-time payments versus late payments. You get that that big 35% of the score is calculated favorably for you from a series and a history of on-time payments and unfavorably for you if you have a history or series of late payments or missed payments or whatever. That's not good. Yep. Now, along with that too, you need history to have a credit score. We're getting there. Yes. Yes. So we'll get there. All right. But total amount owed is number two. So mm -hmm. like credit utilization. So really that's about, Josh, say you have a couple of different credit lines, mm -hmm. different credit cards, credit accounts, home equity line. Who knows what that may be. And you have $50,000 of available credit. If you have currently have outstanding balances of forty. dollars then you've used 80% of your credit. Mm -hmm. So that'd be a lot. Yes. But generally speaking, lower is better on the credit okay. utilization. And we kind of talked about yeah, that in our mortgage yes. in our mortgage discussion that we had. But that, that so that is this that is 20 or that is 30% of your uh, of your credit scores calculated from credit utilization. So generally speaking, that should be lower if you want your score to be higher. 
Now, what you had talked about just a second ago, length of credit history is a 15% component of your credit score. And yes, you have to have some form of credit history to have a credit score. And generally speaking, the longer your credit has been established, the longer you've been utilizing credit through various different means or whatever over the years, the less risky you are. And the longer those accounts have been open. So if you've been an American Express card holder, holder since 1981, you're probably that With that is consistent payment history exactly all the time, that's really going to really like, help yeah. that's going to really help so, so uh, looking at those two history between the length and the actual what you did that's 50% of how they make up that score yes yeah payments and length it's that 50%. is a lot that's crazy uh, next up is another so that was 15% like we said length of credit history next up number 4 is type of credit so there's two types of credit there's installment credit so like you're making an installment payment towards an overall asset or whatever. So that's like a car loan, like a mortgage, those kind of things. And then you've got revolving credit, which is like a credit card. Mm. So where it's just replenished after payments and stuff like that. Yeah. So those are two different types of credit. That's 10%. Then, and, and generally speaking, if there's a hard asset backing things, like an installment credit, rates are going to be lower. They're a little less risky because I can always go back on them and take them and stuff like that. So... I would say that the more proportion of your credit that is leaned towards that, like a mortgage, yes. is going to be viewed as less risky and help your credit score. Which is why I could get maybe a mortgage for $100,000, but my credit card's not going to give me a $100,000 limit because right. there's a lot more risk involved if someone does that. Exactly. Because there's no asset tied to collecting that. Correct. And then final, the final 10% is new credit. So that's like new accounts, new applications for accounts, those kind of things. Really, the less frequent that is... The better, so although if I all of a sudden have a bunch of people checking my credit score for a loan you. that might hurt me. Yes, exactly. So that is how they're calculated. But we talked about how that range, uh, you know, there's a broad range of numbers that, that can be, and there's a cool Motley Fool visual that shows this, and we'll link that in the show notes as well. But generally speaking, the range, like we said, is 300 to 850. So I have the breakout of what those are. So. We'll start at the bottom. Okay. These are, the lower is not as good. Right. We want Low, high numbers. Yeah, you want a high score. But the, the worst you can be is 300 on a credit score. So that's like n- little to no credit, no history, bad missed payments, pretty much yeah, not, good. not good. But 300 to 579, that's a pretty big range. That is 16% of, of people in America wow. have those scores. The next, and that's considered relatively poor. So then you go up a notch to fair. Fair is 580 to 669 is another 18%. Then you go up to good. And this is where, you know, these incre- these are increasing percentages too. So good, 670 to 739. That's 21% of the population. Very good credit scores, a 740 to a 799. 25% of the population. And then to be excellent, it actually does go down in percentages. Only 20% of people have... And over 800. So 800 to 850 are the really the best credit scores out there. So, so those are the ranges there. So two-thirds of the U.S. population lands in good or or better, right? Good Correct. or higher scoring. Exactly. So two-thirds of the population lands at least at the good spot or higher. And uh, generally speaking, if you think of 640 or so as kind of a general break, breaking point of where you're okay. Mm-hmm. Prime to subprime is that yeah. like 640-ish range. So right below good and you can do uh, and mm-hmm. better is good. So how does Josh, how does your credit score affect your borrowing? Yeah. So if I'm in that good, very good, excellent, the higher up I go, the more I've proven my ability to take that on in a reasonable way and pay it off consistently. So that means I am less of a risk to the people that may consider lending to me. And so if I have a high score, let's say I'm, you know, 750 or 760 in the very good category, I'll get a better rate than somebody who's in the 670, you know, in the lower. So I will be able to access more credit with a higher score. Yeah. And, and specifically for banks, if, if they see you walk in the door and you're trying to get a mortgage or whatever, they're going to be very happy to loan you money if your scores, especially like oh north of seven hundred, yes. they'll say, "Oh, thank you. you. Got it. Come on in. We, it's, good it's, rate. it's really low risk for us. We're going to give you what you want, and not mm-hmm. you're not going to have that much yep. interest." Now, if you come in at under six forty or so, that's considered what's called subprime, which it's not a sub ordered from Amazon Prime. No, nope. which I really I should not. I'm always hungry. 
I should not do this recording when I'm hungry because no, I would eat a sub. Think about food. Woo! And if you could get that prime delivered two days though. <laughs> It's not it's fresh. Stale. I don't want no. that. So anyway, subprime, less than 640, you're going to get higher rates because that lender There's is... risk. They're going to be a less less apt to... Lo- Maybe they'll be okay to loan to you, but they will charge you for yeah, it. Yeah, a little extra. So Josh, this is like super exciting. Everyone I'm, loves credit scores. It's, it's what I woke up this morning wanting to talk about. But in honor of Disney Plus turning one year old one year this old. month, that's right. we are going to do a dad joke of the week that's going to make oh, you boy. laugh. I'm ready. All right. So, Josh, why is Tinkerbell always in the air? Why is Tinkerbell in the air? I'm not sure. Why? Because she never lands. Never lands. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. Woo. So, yes, Disney Plus, one year old. I can't believe it. I love me some Disney Plus. Good. That Marvel. Mandalorian? Haven't watched oh, it man. yet. But yeah, I heard there was a whole it. outcry about Baby Yoda eating the eggs. I haven't eggs. got that far yet. So. Oh, don't want to ruin it for you. I've, I heard, but I haven't watched <laughs> like, it. It sounds interesting. Yeah. But I, yeah, I've seen previews. Whenever I get on Disney+, Plus, they have like little mm-hmm. preview on the thing. Watch. It the lo- Mandalorian good. looks really, really good. good. So, yeah, Disney+, Plus, one Did, year old. They're coming out with all the Christmas stuff now. So Home Alone, Home Alone 2, it's on there. Um, they have Prep and Landing, which is a... Uh, disney movie that we had the dvd for and it wasn't there last year really and i i was surprised because it's i was i had double check and i looked it is a disney movie and i thought why isn't it there and they probably had an outstanding deal with some other yeah or whatever but it's there now which is you if you haven't seen those those are pretty good too i still want to watch hamilton too oh yeah the musical i've not seen that i've not i've heard amazing things i've heard it's great but i have yet to sit down and watch it and why not? Yeah. What, what am I waiting for? That's well, it's because know. I'm still working through the Marvel movies. Oh, that's true. So that's tonight, more important. More yeah. Important. So tonight, so my brother in law and my sister and their little one come over once a week. We watch a movie tonight. Where are you at? Which I feel like we probably talk about this pretty frequently on here. I don't here. know which one you're on right now, though. We are. Oh, we just watched Spider Man Homecoming. Okay. So we're watching, which was interesting. Yeah. So we're watching, I think Thor Ragnarok. Oh. That's one of my favorites. Which I've That's never hilarious. seen. It's hilarious. Oh man, this is it's a good one. So my wife Jenna yes. has a her, one of her favorite characters in all of the Marvel series is Loki. Okay, He's and a- yeah, so it kind of, the last Thor movie kind of left you hanging, where Loki impersonated Odin mm-hmm. and on pretty much own, yeah pretty much own. said I love yeah. you, thank you for doing what you did, son. You did good to yeah. Thor. What Thor didn't know it was Loki, but yeah. So now, spoiler, so, yeah. For anybody hasn't known that. Yeah, for anyone that does. Sorry, yeah. sorry guys. Sorry, the movie's been so, out for so four yeah. years, but yeah. sorry, you're missing out. Well, and I just watched it for I the know. first time, but yeah. So that's where we're on is Thor Ragnarok. Oh, you're gonna love so, Thor Ragnarok. It's and we're hilarious. like getting close to the end too. So yeah, it's like final stretch. There. We've got like Ant Man the Wasp. We've got uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Mm-hmm. There's not a whole Star lot. Wars in, or another uh, There's Spider-Man. no Star Wars Spider-Man in, in, there. in that. Yeah, there is another yes. Spider-Man. So anyway, sidebar, Disney Plus, one-year-old. We pretty much use it a lot. It's we love good. it. Kids love it. Kids love it, too. So I guess some general points we should probably make is what makes your credit score go up and down? Josh. That's a good question. Up is up good. Up is good. We up want good. good. Up is so good. The things you could do to improve your credit score. One, and this is big, because if you think back to the when Austin was giving you the rankings of the percentages of how it affects your score, how it's calculated. So up, the big thing is on-time payments. Make them. All right? The better you can have on-time payments, it's huge, because that's 35% of that score exactly. ranking. So on-time, consistent payments is yep. huge. Low utilization, so that means if you have $50,000 of available credit, don't use it all. Use five. Use yeah. ten. You use as little right. as possible. Or, in other words, pay down some of that debt so you have less utilization. Yep. Um, have less inquiries. So anytime someone checks your credit score, it can affect it. Now, there's two ways of checking it. Um, if they do a credit check on you from a, like a job standpoint, they're not accessing the full thing, so that doesn't affect you. But if you're going in to say, hey, I'm going to buy a refrigerator and they check your credit, that's going to have a, a ding on it. Right. I'm going to go buy a car and they're going to check your credit. Yep. The full check on your score can have an impact. So just only do it if you're serious about needing it. Yep. Don't just go around willy-nilly having people check your score. Yeah, exactly. Like If you're really proud of it, I mean, just don't, hey, check my score. Right. No, just, <laughs> I want to see it. it. And then cleaning up old accounts. So if you have open credit, especially like credit cards, 
that affects it because the utilization comes to that. Again, you're accessing, because let's say you have a credit card that has a $2,000 credit limit, but you don't use it. That's still two thousand dollars available, oh, which is of good. your credit. Yeah, but if you're not utilizing it, then you it's need all... to close that out of there. No, you do not. You don't want to close it out of there. You don't want to close, close it, out, it of out, of out of there. Trick question. I want to close it you out. You do there. not want to close it out of there because closed accounts also ding you, and length of credit is a very important. Oh. So you actually let. I want to close that out. You, it'll close on its own eventually. Yes, I want it gone. But yes, I know. I feel the same way, and I I, I've gone. done some research into this. But yes, you leave. I, I see what you're saying. Leave it open Especially with zero your old, balance. Your old ones, like yeah. your, your old ones for Don't, the credit. Because because you're if if you're especially if you opened up some credit cards when you got out of college, yes. and you don't really use those ones anymore. Okay. So if you those them. are your oldest credit, yeah. so you should not close. Those. I don't like those. They will close them on themselves okay. eventually. So. I don't even like that bank. Anymore. That was a trick question. It was a trick question. Okay, so things not to do. Don't things do that make your credit card go down. Down is bad. Yes. Yeah, don't close your credit cards. Don't even though you want to. <laughs> even though even you though want I to. I tell you to. Okay, do not. I'm going to say it again. Do not. One more time. Do not make late payments. Do not miss payments. Yes. And we're going to get to ways to help your credit, but mm-hmm. don't do that ever. There's really with with automatic payments. <laughs> There's really no excuse anymore. Yeah. So don't ever do that. Do not use all your credit mm-hmm. or more than all your credit, which I don't think you can. Don't use it. Don't use it all. Yes. You, that's bad. Don't go get your credit score checked all the time, and don't open and close accounts all every day. Yeah. Because that em- affects yeah. your your new accounts, that new inquiries, and your length of credit. So things not to do. Also, right there. Yep. So how to improve your credit score? Well, this kind of goes without saying, but we just talked about it. Do pay your bills on time. Yep. Do pay them on time. And use automatic recurring payments. Oh, it's huge. It is so, so easy nice. to set up, too. You get a new credit card, the first thing you do is to set up automatic recurring payments. And in a perfect world, automatic recurring payments for the statement balance. Yes, full balance. Because you are then you're not paying any interest, and mm-hmm. cha-ching, yep. you just get rewards, which see our credit card episode yes. if you're interested uh, in learning about our yes. thoughts on credit cards but yes set up recurring payments and then if your credit utilization is too high you can ask your lenders to increase your credit limits yeah. so even if your utilization you keep about the same in dollars if you have more credit available then your percentage goes down which also helps your score so that's another way to do that don't close accounts that will shorten your credit I history don't, I, don't want to close I know it's so counterintuitive but you should not do that and it, again it comes back to we're talking about how to keep your score up, right? When I'm talking financial planning as a financial advisor, sometimes closing accounts to remove that has that that temptation yes. to over different sides of the same totally yeah. different. Which yeah. is again why I keep coming back to I man. When it. I'm talking to people, it's get rid of some of those cards that are just hurting you. Yeah. But you're right from a credit standpoint. Correct. That makes sense. Correct. So hard. And you may be able to like wean it down. Yes. Over time. Yeah. You know the other ones. Just don't do them all at once yeah, or whatever. If, if you have ones that are more recent that you don't use or you're, for instance, let's say you were, go back to the refrigerator, right? You go there and you open a store credit. Like you're not going to use that store again. Get rid of that because it's, it's just floating out there for no reason. Do keep in mind that anytime you close a it account, counts, it yeah. takes your total credit down. Yes. So then your utilization, all things equal, yep. will go up. Uh, I don't. Just, we'll talk to fraud in a minute. That's the other reason exactly. why I open ones you don't pay attention to. Another thing to improve your credit score is don't be afraid to talk to your lenders. Yeah. Because if you have questions or whatever, it's amazing what some of these companies can do if you just talk to them. Yeah. So give them a call. And then I haven't used this, and I'm not sponsored by this at all, but there's a new service I heard about through Experian called Experian Boost, where yeah, they really they allow you to, yeah, they link other recurring uh, like payments like utilities and phone bills and stuff like that that's really not on credit. But they it link shows it to, your payment history. Yeah, they link it to show your pr- your payment history, and it can ap- supposedly help improve your credit score for free. So that could be worth looking into. So you had mentioned this, but checking credit's important. Yes, but not. Attention. But how and when should you check your credit reports? Yeah, really, I think hourly makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, you know, just I've checked mine five times today. That's right. You know, just str- scroll across your screen if you could put it. That's right. There. Uh, no, really, honestly. As we talked about, you checking your credit score does not affect, it doesn't move it, all right? You asking for your credit score does it. Like we talked about having other people check your credit when they're looking for loans and stuff. You checking it doesn't affect it. So don't think, if I look at it, right. it's going down. Yeah. But we also, there's really no point in checking it daily or hourly, like I was joking, because it's not going to change. That's right. the thing about credit. It's really, it's not, it's not there. Yeah. But you should check it two times. 
One, once a year, they allow you for free yep. to check your credit report. All three places allow you annually to get a credit report for free and see where it's at. Two, if you know you're going to need it, that would be a good time to use that annual one. Yep. Or if you've already used it and you're just worried about making sure everything's cleaned up before, let's say I'm going to go get a home loan and I want to really make sure I get the best deal, it'd probably be worth even paying for another credit report if you're been yeah. far enough out to just make sure everything's in line and there's for nothing sure. there you don't know about. So you can go to the FTC. They are the ones that monitor all the Federal Trade stuff. Commission. Federal Trade Commission. They're they're cool people. Um, they set up a website, annualcreditreport.com. That's the only one that's actually like, I don't want to say endorsed, but that's the one that they send you to to get your free credit report. And we'll send a link in the show notes for that. The, F- the Federal Trade Commission actually has a decent information about that. So we'll link that as well. Just that's a spot to go from the government to give you some information you can trust because they're not trying to sell you anything. Correct. Right? They're not a credit monitor trying to get you to yeah. sign up for their business or anything. Uh, and the annualcreditreport.com is where they send you to um, for that. So alternatively, if you want a little bit more real-time, less formal process mm-hmm. of doing that, some personal finance companies... Like uh, I'm thinking of credit card companies or like if you use Mint or whatever, your budgeting app or whatever, through Intu- which is an Intuit company, like they will show you your quote unquote real time credit score. And it's probably not perfect, but it's dang close. Yep. And it can show you that. So like I, I have a Capital One credit card and they have an app, a specific app se- separate from their credit card app called CreditWise. And you can, with your same login from your credit card, you just... Use your thumb or whatever. You know, you log in and you can see your credit score, yep. which is great. And you okay. can see all of the outstanding credit lines. You can see inquiries and everything. So it's kind of handy. And that's if you don't want to get the official, like if you're in between getting the report once a year or whatever, it's a great way to just make sure you're kind of cleaned up. So fraud. Fraud is... So why are you checking your report? Why, I mean, we, we should be checking our report for things like fraud. Yes. Because people steal identities and fraud happens rampantly especially in the United States. Yes. So and what you don't want is to get a letter in the mail saying, Hey, here's this credit card that has $10,000 on it that you haven't paid anything on. And you're like, we're it collecting. wasn't you're like, me. I didn't have a credit yeah. card. And so that's what you're checking for is making sure there's no open line of credit that you did not establish. Exactly. So if you notice something funky when you're looking at your credit report, first of all, look into it, get a hold of the lender and talk to them about it and make sure that they can take care of it. Cause you're not, like you're not liable for credit that's not yours. Right. So if it is identity theft, there are protections in place that you are not but responsible. But it's a pain. But it's a it pain, and score. it can affect your credit score. Yep. So look into it. Take care of it with the lender. Take care of it with the credit union or the credit provider that you're that, that it's showing thorn, up I mean, on. You may have to contact yeah. the police. I mean, there there are you know it, it, you know possible crimes cr- that you have to report and go through that process. Exactly. So one thing that those credit reporting agencies can do is they can put like additional fraud protection mm-hmm. on your account. If you've noticed funky things happening, you've got it taken care of. It's great. It looks clean now. Things are good. They can put additional protections for specified periods of time on your account to have them, if, if you apply for a new loan, then there's an extra step of protection where they have to identify, verify your identity and all this other stuff. So that is one thing that you can do. You can also think about freezing your credit. So yes. w- what are some instances maybe where uh, you would think about freezing your credit? And yeah. what is that, I yeah. guess? So freezing your credit puts a block that no new... It's like where you put all your credit cards in the freezer? In the freezer. No new credit can be opened. Uh, and so it essentially... Or what, closed, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you, you no activity can yeah. happen on your open credit. And so what it does is it eliminates the opportunity for someone to to cause fraud on on your credit. Now, it's important to note that when you do that, they're going to mail you a code, and that's how you unfreeze it. If you lose that code, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And so you just got to be very careful. Put it in the freezer. Responsible. Yeah, put it somewhere safe. <laughs> um, so the idea there is, though, it protects you so that you will be sure that nothing's going to happen. So if someone went and applied for credit, even if it's you, you will not be approved. You will not be able to get it because it's frozen. And then, like you mentioned, is you could put the more of an alert on there, which doesn't stop it, but it adds one layer of protection where they either call you or text you or some way of confirming that it's you doing it. So I guess a couple age groups that may be beneficial for a credit freeze, yes. because they maybe have no use for credit, mm-hmm. is A, 
Kids, kids and adults. Uh, kids and really old people. Yeah, so kids, they have no use for credit, but they have a social security number, so I guess in theory could have fraud happen. Yes. So probably not a bad idea to think about freezing your kid's credit because that would be... Don't lose the number, though, so they can, exactly. when they're ready to get credit, yeah. they can have it. Uh, alternatively, the elderly, yes. because they are the most susceptible to fraud. Think about all of those scam calls. They're the ones that typically yes. are most susceptible to that. So that is unfortunate, mm-hmm. but... Maybe if you're if you're paying cash for your way through life as an elderly person, great. You do not really need it credit. Up. Lock it up and leave it. Don't lose your paper. Yes, it's it's like your it's like your Bitcoin code or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like if you lose it, you're just done. Yeah. I just think of yeah. I mean, the idea there is there's things in place. The alerts to me are a lot better of an option because yeah, I agree. it usually lasts for about six months or so. So you have to renew and you can renew it. Yeah, you, I just think have to you can keep it. it up to like seven years in yeah. some instances. Yep. And you, and it, especially if you had issues, they can extend it longer without yeah. you have to renew it. But the idea there is it's not permanent, but it does help put an extra layer on. True. And usually it's free or relatively cheap to do. Yeah. So, it's so nice. let's wrap it up. Yep. By the way, uh, Jess, our Ooh, colleague, yes. did in the Everyday Advisor, she did a article. Um, and on freezing your credit. Yeah. So if you're interested in freezing your credit, she Absolutely. did a great article on that. We'll link that in the show notes. So, Josh, who needs a good credit score? No one. No one? No. Well, um, actually, that's the second part of my answer is who doesn't need a good credit score. So who does not need a good credit score is um, rich royalty who don't need to worry about their finances. So, a.k.a., probably yeah, not uh, you and not us. Yeah. So that's who does not care about their credit score, but who does? Anyone else? Yeah. And it really just depends on where you're at in life. So if you own a house, have a credit card if you want one, and have a car you like and aren't planning on getting anything new, you don't need a credit score. But if you think you're ever going to need somebody right. to loan you money, you're going to want a credit score. In so any like, way, shape, or form. In any way, shape, or form. So, yeah. yeah. And it's, it is out there. Some jobs, too, you know, depending right. what industry you're in, also take a look at that as well. I'm, so, you're right. Most people need to at least be aware of the right. credit score and do the best they can to get it in the, you know, good to excellent type of area. Yeah, I would say that the, the most, you know, acceptable form of debt from a financial advisor perspective is probably a low fixed rate mortgage mm-hmm. nice and you're going to need a good credit score to get a good rate on that yes. so even if you're extremely conservative in your the way you run your finances and avoid debt like it's the plague you don't have car payments you don't have credit cards it's it, housing is expensive and if you great for you if you have enough cash to go yeah. buy a house but most people really aren't in that situation so Monitoring your credit and having good credit is probably important in that way. If you plan on living in your parents' basement, though, and never owning anything, you may not need credit either. Man, I so did, it's not royalty I or rich, but yeah, it's, I didn't you know, really you know, moocher. Yes, I didn't really take that. Uh, I I need to talk to my parents about that. Is yeah. it too late? Yeah. Move back. Like I got, I got married. I, I got married and I have a three year old. Right. Can, can I move back in? <laughs> so as always check out our free gift to you it's a brief list of eight principles of timeless investing these are overarching investment themes meant to keep you on track to meet your financial goals it's a wonderful pdf it's on our, it's free it's on our website so check that out josh how can people help us to continue to grow this podcast and uh, help people week after week yeah subscribe that's the big one that way you get an alert or it automatically downloads to whatever you use to listen to the podcast leave us a review especially on the apple podcast website that's where we get ranked, and so more people can find us, and we can help more people. If you have any great ideas or have questions about freezing your credit or anything like that, email us at hello at the investeddads.com. We'd love to hear from you. And then finally, if you know somebody who is new to credit or trying to figure out what they need to do, and you think this episode would help, make sure you share it with them. All right. Well, until next Thursday, thank you, and have a great week. All right. See you later. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Invested Dads podcast. This episode has ended, but your journey towards a better financial future doesn't have to. Head over to theinvesteddads.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and we had a positive impact on your life, leave us a review. Click subscribe and don't miss the next episode. Josh Robb and Austin Wilson work for Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. All opinions expressed by Josh, Austin, or any podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. 
This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. Securities investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment plan or strategy will be successful.